I think this is a game all of you should try during Halloween because it looks interesting to me, and I think you would all find it interesting. This is Crypt oh. Master Review. And also Raiko should probably try this because he's always been into, like, the Crypt Keeper, stuff like that. But yeah, this is apparently an oh, indie shit. title that I believe is on Steam. I'm calling to you from beyond oh, the grave that separates the living oh. and the dead. Oh. <laughs> oh, you fools, there was a sign about that. <laughs> No, no, the sign specifically told you not to do that. Did you see that, fa er, Fable? <laughs> there was a sign that oh. said, keep off grass. Keep off grass? <laughs> what is this person doing? So they stepped on the grass and took pain. He's like, the sign specifically told you not to do that. <laughs> oh my lord. Well, yeah, this is a very interesting game. Oh no, we're going monochrome. In the year, Save I played me. Played through a bunch of Next Fest demos, and I can oh. safely say I wasn't expecting Mavis Beacon's Tales from the Crypt to be one of my favorites. <laughs> Mavis Beacon's Tales from the Crypt. Maybe because it's a typing game, and I thought this might have already peaked with Typing of the Dead. The Honestly, I did think so too. I'm not very good at typing, so those typing games go over my head, and I type pretty slowly. All things considered, that this is a slow dungeon crawler until the fighting starts. Even then, while it's not the recommended one, there is a turn-based option for combat. Giant crab so it monsters still doesn't have to be that frantic. The story itself oh. is an easy setup. You've been Dear God, by I do hate that oh. Crypt Master, who wants oh. to reach the dungeon surface. And like some other dungeon games, here you play a party of characters: a warrior, an assassin, a bard, and a sea witch. Which is kind <laughs> of like a regular witch, but she throws more fish. <laughs> Wouldn't you like the salmon spell fable? Oh, Fable? Oh no, I think Fable is dead. Uh oh. All hail the new Fable! Oh no! Now Fable. I will just have... No! But yes, if you like a bit of like horror aesthetic, like Halloweeniness, I feel like you would like this. But like any good dungeon, there are plenty of obstacles, oh. weirdo characters, and Ooh. other side things to get past. Yeah. And throughout all of it, the Crypt Master is your constant companion. Asking what you're oh. up to, reacting to what you type in, and trying to be helpful at 20 questions and other riddles. Had to, oh, Fable had to run to the bathroom. Oh, dear. Oh. Mm, no, at least I don't he's... like that. Look. Mavis Beacon was never real, and the Crypt Master feels like more of a genuine educator. To the point oh. that if you avoid the game's tutorials to try and softball mm. yourself, he calls you out on it. Oh. All you had to do was type the word hit. <laughs> I hinted, and then I outright instructed you. But having a spell that lets me summon fish would be cool. But yes, look at this. I even used two separate tooltips. He follows this <laughs> up with a step-by-step -step guide on how to refund the game. <laughs> and then click on support. <laughs> there will be an option to ask for a refund. <laughs> and you should select. The game is too hard. <laughs> as your reason for wishing to do so. I can't believe they got through a literal step-by-step -step on how to refund your, their game because we're like we know what bullshit you're going through we're not going to play this game if you couldn't tell already <laughs> he's the soul of this game and one of the actual so designers, meta. Which, yeah which does make it feel extra appropriate and the game was made by a very small team so this, this is, is one of the actual like main creators talking to you the whole time games that due to the nature of oh no a giant rat in a box chrono's one weakness don't want to show a whole ton my first run took me about 10 hours, and there were, <laughs> there were still quite a few secrets and leads that I never followed up on. There's a good amount going on. Oh. I never thought rats would be capable of... Your one weakness, rats. ...an erection on that scale. Rats, rats, we are the rats. Right. Okay, I didn't need those words. To go for the obvious, the choice of black and white is an interesting one. It's, it's a very cell-shaded looking game to me. A movie to go that route yeah, nowadays, but for a 3D is. game, that's even more rare. Typically, they might yeah. have some color for emphasis or a way to bring it back. Here, Crypt Master is fully committed to the bit, and where dungeon games can have a problem with areas looking too similar, now you're watching it through Mr. Ed Vision. The thing oh. is, it really works here for a few <laughs> reasons. Mm -hmm. For one, the environments have the work put in to make them stand out from each other. I can there see that. There is always a grungy, damp, 
Like, mm -hmm. there's so much coloration on everything. You can see the, the out... Basically, yeah. the... It's like looking at a manga and seeing all the shading they had to do. It's insane to look yeah. at. Locations still feel distinct and not copy and pasted from each other, which again can be one of the biggest pitfalls in this genre, and the good ones tend to avoid it. Beyond mm -hmm. that, the style works well for the idea. After all, your entire party is undead, brought back to a cursed life by a speak and spell necromancer. <laughs> but... Speak and spell necromancer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. It gives them a white bony look, and thematically, that's how they see the world too. How it uses that extreme contrast in the environments and its characters. Ugh. It really accents fine lines that, and that, light. That looked like something I would see in uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Another detail. The Crypt Master himself yeah. is almost always bathed in shadow to where he's nearly part of it. And once it does look like he's part of it the way you look at his hood. It feels like it's moving. Yeah. That, it's hard to imagine him in actual color. It also feels like the game is capturing a very specific art style. It could be they're pulling from some graphic novel or something else they don't know about, but I think it has to be they're drawing from 70s and 80s D&D artwork. People oh, this section... I've never seen some of these artworks, but yeah, I can see it. Like, early D&D. Yeah. If Abel was here and not yeah. dead, then maybe he could tell us about early D&D artwork. People still play with the art style today, and everything in the game's line work just screams it. It's also a good tone. Sometimes black and white is a good mood setter on what you're needing to do. Mm -hmm. But it also changes how you view the world, really. It also sometimes yeah. can allow for more detail. Because you're having to express with only two colors. Early D&D exactly. art is weird, says Fable. Bit since while the game he speaks to me from the great beyond. Oh, dear God. Is that a giant Cheap rat? Cheap man! Is that a giant rat? like a giant... I think it's a giant rat man. I'm not sure. Drier, He's got googly than eyes. Have everything being super exaggerated or hyper colorful. It instead looks like the Turbo Nerd drawings from a first edition D and D rulebook. <laughs> Turbo Nerd drawings. It does look more mundane, but it's grounded. It's having hmm. a DM who's clearly put thought and effort into the world building, but they'll still crack jokes. For those who don't know, Fable is a DM, but this seems like something that he would do. Yeah. If they come up with a bit that's entertaining or fun, we'll just roll with it. But the world itself isn't overly wacky. It's a balance oh. that's kind of hard to explain if you've never played a tabletop game like that. But this game nails it. According to this book, if you suspect a lake is harboring mermen, you can simply mm -hmm. cast a gentrify spell and count the top hats as they float to the surface. I don't get it. Remarkable. There can be some. I don't get the joke, honestly. <laughs> Thanks to the character animations, especially moving through the world or fighting, but it's the kind of game where Ooh. it feels like that kind of thing doesn't matter much. Besides, as you may have suspected, this is a very audio-centric game. The main cast is great, especially the Crypt Master, of course, but you can also run across skulls, which will offer mm. souls in exchange for answering a riddle or logic puzzle. These sound like they're voiced by random friends and family, so the mixing is all over the place, but it's cute. Of course, going back to the star, he has an insane amount of... I love the crazy, creative ideas people come up with video games in the indie scene nowadays. It is incredible, some of the ideas that we have gotten out of that. Like, sometimes they're literally just inspired from other games, but other times, they're completely new ideas that can just smack you in the face with something that you didn't know yeah. that you wanted. Quite literally. I mean... To be honest, I think uh, people like Scott Coffin and a lot of those old developers actually really paved the way for the new ones to come yeah. in and actually do really good stuff. And sometimes these new indie studios are literally just old developers who are like, hey, we didn't want to work for these people anymore. Yeah. That's good, Mac. Nothing much, Dad. We're it's just awesome. looking at this. Apparently, it was all done manually, so I fear how Hello. many hours this man spent oh, in the dictionary just reading stuff out. A oh, he, amount has context he just said. Like wait, he reads out all the words you say from a dictionary. Which is a helmet. And if you say a shield, he'll go, eh, it's metal and protects you, but it's not quite that. Seeing how far a tangent can go with him is a big part of the game's fun. <laughs> As for the what? sound effects, they're pretty good. A large amount of it is just howling wind, but it's... Oh, really I can see the D&D &D reference. Oh, book. I pressed the wrong button. This is a very audio-centric piece, but... Oh, a surprising amount has context. Like, you can see the D20 right there in the corner. I'm kind of yeah. blocking it a little, but yeah. Like guessing an object in a box, which is a helmet. And if you say a shield, he'll go, eh, it's metal and protects you. As for the ambient sound effects, they're pretty good. 
A large amount of it is just howling wind, but it's good howling wind. The soundscape is decent enough on its own that... It so what do you think of this game so far, Fable? Who's come back to life? It's interesting. Oh, he's, he's alive! He's okay. alive. All hail the new Fable. has some interesting music. There's a variety that I would not expect from the oh. monochrome dungeon crawler. Oh, a lot of the battle music has guitars to the Sing. forefront. When you hear the main theme, which is mysterious and creepy, you could be expecting more of that Halloween ambience, but no. There is some of that. Some it's more like old D and D. out of place in something like The Legend of Grimrock. Yeah. At least if that game had music beyond its great main theme. Some of the tracks are more rock influenced with the guitar. A giant crab There's monster. Keyboard music that sounds straight out of later old mm, games. Wine. And it even goes into music huh. jazz sometimes. Remember how it feels to be warm. Honestly, this does feel like a good game to play for Halloween. Just based on the design alone. Mm -hmm. I might play this for Halloween. Oh. This music right here reminds you of Persona 5, just a bit, with how jazzy it is. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Then some music, who knows. What the hell? It it's, uh, that music right there is sounding like it, I should be in Fable's clown corner in his circus. <laughs> it keeps you guessing. Because it was just like sly whistles and all that silly sound you hear like a clown do. Game. It's haunted wordle with some extra steps. Since hmm. your entire party is undead, their brains are more fried than trying horse tranquilizer in Philly. Which oh, means wow. they have the khaki pants of role playing games, hmm. amnesia. They may have been great heroes in life, but they've lost their memories and their skills. As you play through the game, you unlock more of them and just type them out to use them. Enemies will drop a letter of their name, which fills out the next thing to unlock. But there are also other ways of collecting letters. Hmm. When you open chests, the Crypt Master isn't sure what's in them because his brain is kind of fried too. So you play 20 questions to help him recall the word, and if you get it, you loot every single letter of it, which is usually a big step ahead. Oh. The same goes for the riddles and other brain teasers hmm. you run across, and there are a few other ways to get individual letters too. So character progression is all about guessing what the next skill or memory is, and the more letters you have, the easier that is. I didn't think I would be playing Scrabble in this, but okay. And each character has done. Oh. Well, actually, I should have been so expected like to play D &D, Scrabble. It's like D&D, Dungeon Crawler, mixed with Scrabble. Mixed with, uh, Typing of the Dead. Skills, so you're unlikely to unlock mm -hmm. them all by the time you hit the end game. Especially mm -hmm. since the farther down you go, they can start reaching for some obscure vocabulary. Whoa. Which, if you stack that on with 20 questions oh my and riddles, God. it makes it a pretty fun game to play as a group, too. Not that it has actual online functionality yet, but if you have a couch or can stream it somewhere, you'll be in luck if you know a Wordle guy. Though a, you're desperate, <laughs> there is a, game a Wordle guy? Do you have a Wordle guy fable? I wish I had a Wordle guy. Turn on, mm -hmm. the Crypt Master Dang. will help you out. Plus, Everyone as wishes they had a Wordle guy. Are, he reacts to the wrong answers. Oh. What? I. I look you're a zombie. If something falls off, it falls off. <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> you're a zombie. If something falls off, it falls off. <laughs> Why are you talking about food? As you're just trying to upgrade your party, you're running across new interactions. Then combat gets some more added onto it. The master helps power you through a soul stone, and in combat, some of the earlier skills are free, but it'll eventually start costing you one soul per letter. A frog Many man! methods, it'll give you letters, will also give you souls, oh, wow. but there are some extras like scraping bugs off the wall. Or Ugh. playing cards against some characters, which you can do a bit of deck building in. As you oh, learn wow. more skills, you figure out new combos and strategies to win with. You are held back by cooldown timers, so while it helps, it's not all about typing as fast as humanly possible. And the enemies could have abilities that dim your usuals. You could come to a fight and realize that using a certain letter will empower your enemy, or they will oh. have a shield that blocks it completely. And as they strike you, oh, it blosses any word with G or W. Huh. If you don't heal up with a skill or going back to an altar, your party dies and goes back to a save point. There are other things you can discover that add on to the system, but it's all pretty straightforward. It is hmm. easy to understand, but you do have a lot of skills to consider. And some get extremely specific, like this will only work if the enemy has the letter C in their name, so you won't use those often. I almost wish okay. skills like that did have some kind of prompt, because once you've figured out your own wombo combo, even if the enemy has a protection against it, you won't need to go around it too often. And yeah. You can manually increase the number of letters you loot from an enemy in the options, 
It does seem like something that should scale up as the game goes on, because by the time I hit the end, I had barely unlocked half of the character's skills. Oh, there wow! To find, but it's obvious you don't actually need that many. Which is good, but I guess I do wish there was some kind of hard mode to see how crazy things could get. Even with that, because of all your options, it doesn't mm. feel that repetitive. Combat is a core part of the game, mm. but it's not all of it. It's more a constant drive of going, what the hell is coming next, and what else can this game react to? For reference, a friend of mine <coughs> said that you could jack off to save. What? Did anyone else hear that? I think I heard jack off to save. Yes, I heard that too, so I'm not it's crazy. It's full of secrets with a light overarching story. You're but crazy. Moment -moment gameplay I'm not crazy. Back to it. If anything, I wish the last two chapters of the game were longer. Which does feel impressive to think when this game easily could have been a simpler gimmick that I wouldn't have cared to finish. So, this is an easy recommend for me, and because of its tiny dev nature, oh. I would highly recommend you leave a GOG or Steam review if you liked it. It's a game that deserves the boost, and feels insanely refreshing. Yes. It felt like a nice vacation from some other mind-breaking games, but... For Halloween, I think I might play this, even though I'm shitty at board games. On those next time. Everyone likes bubbles. Memory discovered. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? I heard something. I didn't hear exactly what was said. It, it said everyone likes bubbles when she said it, and the Crypt Master said, I don't. <laughs> well, the Crypt Master's mean. How is he mean, Fable? He doesn't like bubbles. <laughs> Do I think System Shock might go the way of Homeworld and be too focused around Shodan like Karen was? Not really, actually. Mm -hmm. If it does continue, there are still things you could do with her character. I'm not sure how they would make a System Shock 3, I'll be Homeworld honest. scale felt too big for that kind of thing, and we saw... I'm going... For those who don't know, over here also, I am going... Every Monday, I'm going through the System Shock remake and trying to hopefully not die to Shodan's machinations. It's... Uh, <laughs> it's been a trial with some help from chat, hopefully surviving. Homeworld has a big universe that they keep smushing down. Who would throw a worse dinner party, Hayes or Halligan? I'll oh. say Hayes. I don't want to eat his brand of human meat. Have I changed <laughs> opinions on games I've reviewed before? And how? Some games like Necromunda and Sunless Skies definitely got improvements to make the core of the game feel a lot better. Live mm. service ones can get better and worse in different ways, but most stuff point. I go back and play that hasn't changed, I haven't really shifted on unless I learned something new about them. Like how Fear 1 had tons of side character <clears> stuff that was cut, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Why do I put a spotlight on sound? Mainly because a lot of people only bring it up if it's bad. Sound design does a lot of invisible lift. Yeah, people don't realize how good sound design can really change the mood of a scene. Mm -hmm. It really can, if you're having a really good mood, like, good music can really empower you in a boss fight, or a good scene can really emphasize how important it is to characters, or you, you know what I mean. Games that do have great sound you know reason why- really good music can really hype up a stage. Like, I can think of a Gundam video game that has amazing music, but it's- the gameplay is awful. Like, it has a whole orchestra. In fact, after this, we'll listen to some, because, dear God, it's worth listening to. Plus an I mean, soundtrack is you could also look at uh, uh, Sonic Adventure 2. It's that simple. They have an excellent soundtrack, but what the fuck? I'm a big fan of the Sonic Adventure 2 games, but I will say this. Yeah, Sonic but... Adventure 2's gameplay is m mid at best, except for Chow Garden. Chow Garden is probably the best thing. But, Chrono, no one's a fan of Sonic. <laughs> Oh, I'm messing boy. with you. I'm messing with you. Oh, anyway. Oh I heard someone, well, I've seen it on oh, Twitter. There. Someone's literally making a, um, making a Chow Garden specific game. Well, I, it's based mm -hmm. on the Chow Garden. It's really cute looking. Yeah, I make a quite literal yeah. joke because I know how many Sonic fans there are. I know how many crazy Sonic fans there yeah. are. And I'm friends with yeah, two Sonic fans crazy. that I know. And yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we'll listen to some stuff later. I hope you guys liked the video. If you like it well enough, consider subscribing, consider doing all that stuff, consider checking out my Patreon to hopefully support me so I can keep doing this stuff for you because honestly, honestly, between this and working, it's kind of hard to stream, work, and get these videos out. But thank you all so much, mm -hmm. and I hope to see you guys later. Also, if you're a Sonic fan, go, go check out Chrono stuff. He is a big Sonic person.
He just pulls out a Sonic plushie out of nowhere. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Anyway, I wish I had a starting plushie. Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys later.